By the way, uh, Russia is invading Ukraine. Why? Yeah. Oh, oh, wait. Okay. Actually, we're not invading Ukraine. They were actually the uh, protectors the part of Ukraine that broke away. The protectors. The yeah. Ukraine's not really legit anyways. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah, we're. I don't know where this is gonna go. We are talking but about oil prices. They just put. We will see immediate reaction. Better fill your tanks. Goodbye. Yeah. But oil prices will go up. These little things. But yeah, they've invaded Ukraine, and I don't know what Ukraine's going to do. I hope they still do stay away from Ukraine. <laughs> uh, okay, that appears to be uh, just talks. We got to the Swedish page. We got who hated cats and dogs? Uh, what was Wallenstein? Yeah, Wallenstein. Oh, yeah. Wallenstein. What was the first phase? And it ended up in a horrible defeat of the Protestant forces. Even though it's more complex than that, at White Mountain. Oh, that's, that's White Mountain. Mountain. Right here, White Mountain. It's a beautiful mountain. <laughs> It's not white, though. By the way, what is how <laughs> many insect fragments are there per 100 grams of peanut butter? What? A thousand. Only 30. Only 30. Where are you grabbing this information? From the FDA. <laughs> no, no, they allow 1,250 or more ground insect fragments for, for, for 10 grams of oregano. Hey, if you eat stuff, you're going to get bugs. It's just a matter of how much do they tell you. You're going to eat bugs. Do we get to Gustavus? We got Brighton Bell. Oh, yeah, I showed you this picture, didn't I? Uh huh. I showed you that creepy picture of him. Mm. By the way, the sun's out and it's like zero. It's so cold. You want to go out? It's so cold. How is it? The battle on the Zero's <laughs> warm. I had a bad yeah, dream last night that somebody. Oh, you from Alaska or something? Yeah, no kidding. Alaska? <laughs> I had a dream last night that we had a drill, like a fire drill. We all had to go outside. I'd be fine. <laughs> You'd be out the app, laughing at everybody. You're I'd make you pay. So, and like, this is it. at the Battle of Lutzen, this is to be a big time, a massive battle when a Napoleon's great victories in 1813. This is another place I want to go just because there's two battle sites there. Wallenstein led now the Empire's forces and Spanish forces to a dramatic victory, and Adolphus was mortally wounded. Similar thing's going to happen to his nephew against Peter the Great. They did the peak over the lines and got hit. And when the battle was over, the Swedes held the battlefield. The Empire's forces retreated, but what, without Gustavus, they had no real chance. They would be in the cloud. No, they kept their well-trained army. There's always going to be this Swedish force. Actually, the Swedes are going to be a great power. Yes? When you say the Empire, do you mean the Imperial? Holy Roman Empire. The Imperial forces. Dark Vader. Yeah, the Imperial forces. And that, that basically is a, the Austrians, the Habsburgs, the Austrians, and the Spanish. And Dark Vader. And Dark Vader. And you figure with the Death Star, the Swedes, but the Swedes are tough. I should add, the Swedes would do what a lot of countries do. They have this really well-trained army. They'll keep that reputation, and then they'll decide to invade, invade Russia. <laughs> oh, yeah. And wait, wait, wait. they die. invade Russia during the winter? Uh, for about a year. And the Swedes never recovered. But, Wallenstein was considered to be too powerful and untrustworthy. And that's actually right. Because he was actually in conversations with Turk joining the Protestants. He didn't care as long as you kept cats and dogs out of where he was at and gave him money. And so he would be assassinated. Yes, on a pike. It looks like he's trying to discuss like physics and he's about to be skewered with a pike. Yeah, this is kind of a funny one. Hi, how's it going? And then gets impaled. He's like, oh yeah, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> so then. But the Imperial forces would win a huge victory at Northern Legion. And this was a topsy-turvy battle. The Swedes were outnumbered, but their assumption was their superior forces would win. I love this painting because those are the pikemen. See that here? That's how they drew the pikemen. They try to draw the points. They just draw a few of them. But there's actually they're blocks of 16 by 16 men. I don't know why. They just look, instead of pike, they just look like houses. Yeah, yeah they kind of yeah. do. Like they're carrying houses with them. 
And in the center of the line, in this section right here, there was kind of a hilly area. There was a push of pipe, it was called. With a pipeman, they called that with a battle with a pipe, men would meet each other. And the Swedes, their allies ran, and the whole army fell apart. And the Swedes would never again, at least in this war, become the dominant force. But I should add, like I said before, for the rest of the war, this would be an important part of the Protestant forces. You know, the Swedish army was good, but never quite the same. And so, I showed you this yesterday, right? Are we going to watch it again? Uh, no. Maybe at the end. Maybe we'll watch it when we're on the map. Remind me. But the French, under Louis the Thirteenth, were watching this, seeing the Habsburgs, both the Austrians and the Spanish, weaken, and they're like, "Hey, like that? Do I sound French there?" Yes. Hey. No, I think what you need is to have a little bit of wine and a and a beret. Yes. yes. But they jumped in. Now the thing about this, this shows that the whole thing about religious wars, Catholic versus Protestant. Was always kind of garbage, and now it's pure garbage. The French were a majority Catholic country. They were in the process of kicking out the Huguenots, and they're joining in against the Catholic Austrians and the Catholic Spanish, the imperial forces. It's now about politics. It's about land. It's about empire. It's about weakening the Habsburgs, and this would be the most bloody and violent time of the war. France jumped in, and it's purely for empire, purely. It's no coincidence that it's under Louis the Thirteenth they start getting the French beginning to colonize what is that New France, Quebec, and down the Mississippi. France is also getting involved in India. France is expanding their empire, and they want the Spanish Netherlands, aka Belgium, today. So the French attack. They join in, give money. By the way, the British have their own little civil war, so they're busy. Yeah. Plate armor that sure. Would wear. See, plate armor and helmets, but like the pikemen sometimes will have plate armor, sometimes not. Cavalry, the heavy cavalry also have plate armor. But musketeers that? rarely did. Yeah, that, and that part of it was just to make them look dramatic in the painting. The war went worldwide, and bloody, horrible fights. His armies marched through Germany. They left a path of destruction. And the armies were very poorly paid, always short of food, so they would steal from the peasants. Literally rape, murder, and pillage as they went, leaving a wake of destruction. This will be such a horrible time. A third of the civilians in Germany would die in this phase. These kind of wars are part of the reason why the United States has no religious test for office and would add a freedom or the I mean, no law against religion in the First Amendment. This is because that we don't want this. So we well, mentioned German towns and then with farmers being recruited, also many farmers died. Also, would you want to go pick your crop because someone's going to steal it anyways? No. This is going to lead to a massive famine. You can imagine what's going to happen. By the way, one more thing hit too. So remember the potato that came over? This would be, during this time, one of the first potato blights hit. And potato blights come in waves. This fungus that potatoes, which almost all potatoes are, are uh, clones. Now the most famous that most of you are probably thinking about is the 1640s potato blight. Most people think of Ireland, but it was worldwide. Yeah, yeah. The thing about Ireland ha hit here too. And not as many people were, were um, needed the potato, but if there's bad economic or bad agricultural times, potatoes, you just need a patch of dirt. Potatoes. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit. You have to plant them. Oh, really? Science. Well, just no, let them grow. I just put them on top of the Oh, you put them on top? Yeah. Yeah, they will kind of just grow. Yeah. So, eventually over 8 million people would die. It was a catastrophe. And you can imagine how people would be reluctant to have families. I mean, this was a, just a massive catastrophe. And now it's all about fighting in for empire. 
I just want to give you an idea of how the population declined. Was that just in uh, Holy Empire, Spain, France? Yeah, just this, just German. Just Germany. What, what is what? What are the German majority German speaking people? But that includes today parts of France, Italy, Austria, yeah. like Slovenia, Switzerland, yeah, yeah. Netherlands, Netherlands, Belgium. Because the Dutch are still fighting their civil war. And also, prices just went out of the world. If armies are marching through, especially with loot they stole, they jacked the prices up. Just like when you're trying to buy a house now in Missoula. Yes? Um, wait, did the Holy Roman Empire ever come to attack French soil, or was it all around the Roman There was an invasion, yeah. They did advance here, a little bit towards Paris. Because it looks like it's all like around the Holy Roman Empire territory. 90% was in what is now Germany. Yeah. And Europe never recovered trade. Trade leagues fell apart. Uh, Bel or the Netherlands, which was so rich early in the century, they never really recovered from this. It's one of the great ironic twists. And here they are fighting for empire. England's having their civil war, but since they're not going to have, they're going to have fighting on their soil, but not quite to the extent. They have their own different type of civil war, but they will emerge out of the, from the wreckage of the Thirty Years' War in a really good position to dominate trade, just because most of their competitors were so weakened. So, France, Louis the Thirteenth was king. Remember the good king, Henry the Fifth was assassinated in 1610. So Louis XIII was a little, a little boy. And Cardinal Richelieu, he was a cardinal, had immense influence, regent, and then his most important advisor. Here's Louis, who was actually pretty smart, um, but very young, and you know, imagine your whole life as a kid, and that's Richelieu like this, yeah. What is exactly is a cardinal? Cardinal is one of the highest ranking positions in the Catholic Church. And so consider them like. Um, is that like cardinal or cardinal? No. No, like the name. Oh, the name. Actually, the name for cardinal is a, is a, bird, a red bird. And since they dress in red, they started calling them cardinals. Oh, okay. So. And the big thing was him, all the teeth state above any other consideration. In this context, obviously, religion. And the way he looked at it as, France had money and manpower. And so they could use that as a, to win the Thirty Years' War, take advantage, expand their empire, more money and manpower. But there's wealth there, but the crown needs money. So what did they do? They sold titles of nobility. They made more people knights, dukes, barons. The problem with that is they got the money, but in France, noblemen pay almost no taxes. Do you see a problem down the road where you might have a tax collection problem? I'm not talking revolution. I will in about a week. Can I have? Yes. How do you sell a, a title? Huh? How do you sell a title? They literally just say, you, you pay money, you can become a duke. So basically, they so it's like, okay, give me money, now you're a baron. Yes. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Isn't the French Revolution 1789? 1789. Uh, wait, uh, what's 1786? 1722. Yeah. There's something that happened. 1722. Uh, that was the important. 1722. Louis XIV died a couple years early before that. War of the Spanish Secession was over. I can think about the moment. I mean, something might pop into my head, but I can't think of anything. So, at the Second Battle of Norwegian. And by the way, here's another map. You see the plate? Huh? Norwegian. The Imperial forces were beaten by the combined French who were learning. And the big thing is, the French started using more musketeers. They got trained, they could fire just a little bit faster, and the other thing is more cannon. The cannon in the first battle, they literally had to kind of set them up, and they couldn't be moved. The French 
and the Swedes by 1640 or 1645 had them been moved by horseback, at least some of their batteries, which is huge. They also started firing a, they also came up with a new weapon that was actually designed by the navies called Grape Shot. And Grape Shot was used to great effect at the Second Norwegian. You know what Grape Shot is? Yeah. Isn't it like a type of ammunition where instead of, instead of just a giant single ball, it's like, Hundreds of other balls that are fired at once. Not quite that many. I think be like 10 or 12 balls, not that big. But still, 10 or 12 balls. So it's kind of like a shotgun effect. Yeah, now you're thinking of something, what that, or that kind of is called canister. And what's the big thing about grape shot? Sails. The thought was if you shoot them at sails, that could rip apart sails, and now a ship becomes motionless. But think about what that does on the ground. So, normally, Jen. But that's when the Imperial forces say, it's not worth it. Our area we want to conquer is now devastated. Spain broke the bank. They've been fighting pretty much constantly since their creation, since Spain was really started in 1497. And they've been fighting, and they've won some victories. Last remember, Charles V, Philip, Lepanto, the Spanish Armada. They've been fighting, fighting, fighting. And I just put this up here. Look at some of the areas and the percentage of loss. Can you guess where the armies did most of the marching and fighting? Here, these are Swedish lands, that was Swedish Pomeranian, and so they had a couple different invasions by imperial forces. Some areas escaped, like this part of Austria, is never really invaded, but just a bloodbath, and obviously very uneven. And the stories of some of the uh, there's all these stories about torturing of victims, torturing of, of, of various enemies. Here are one of the Protestant uh, propaganda pictures showing what they're doing to Protestant prisoners. Broiling and eating them because, you yeah. know, here is these are Protestants being hung by imperial forces. And the stories of trees filled to the brim with bodies that they would leave out there for a year. Look what happens to those who resist. Look what happens to those who are Protestant. The Treaty of Westphalia, 1648, basically they said, all right, it's done. We'll basically allow, like, um, we'll keep the same system, let the princes decide. But there'll be three religions, Catholic, Lutheran, and Calvinist. We give up. And the Netherlands, even though they basically won their independence, they became fully free. And so did the Swiss Federation. This little mixed up group in the mountains of all kinds of, you know, they got some Germans, some French, some Italians, some people who they spoke a language no one could understand. They joined together. And that's why we go to Switzerland, there's four languages. And part of the reason they let them be free, it's in the mountains, they're too hard to invent. That's what allowed Switzerland to remain neutral. neutral. Two world wars, why too hard to invent? Not because they're neutral. That doesn't matter. As we're seeing right now, it doesn't matter if a country wants to be invaded or not. Does not matter. Nope. Belgium was neutral too in two world wars. And the Holy Roman Empire, then it lost its power. A rump state is a state that still has its name, but it no longer is a powerful state. <laughs> the Holy Roman Empire now is just a name. What matters are the competing principalities, like Austria or Saxony or Bavaria. Well, basically, survived in name. Right? Yes. It. There are still over 300 states now. It's been reduced. A lot of them have combined. There were over a thousand before, but France's power went up, and then this little, relatively small country called Brandenburg, whose capital was this town called Potsdam. They grew up in power. 
The kingdom of Brandenburg in 50 years will be known as the kingdom of what? Prussia. And that's Prussia. And just outside of Potsdam, this little tiny trading community will grow into a town called Berlin. Berlin? Berlin. If you go to Potsdam, I mean, if you go to Berlin, go to Potsdam. That's where you get the, the king of uh, Prussia, where they live. Austria, and, and we already mentioned Spain. Spain's devastated, but Austria went down in power too. And what that meant is that opened the door for competitors within the Holy Roman Empire. So, next week we will talk about Frederick the Great. Was he actually great? Yes. Okay. He could play the flute very well. Okay, so that's... You're really oh, good. That's amazing. You're a talented dude. Talented dude. Did I just say dude? Yes, I did. He wore cowboy hat and chaps. What does he do? I don't know. Hmm? You know what a dude is? A dude is a city slicker who wants to act like a cowboy. They were chaps and a cowboy. That's a dude. Frederick the Great grew up on a cowboy, uh, grew up on a ranch in Wyoming. <laughs> Few people know that, especially since there was no Wyoming yet. Is that an urban dictionary? <laughs> so, that is the new kingdom. Here is between these, this is now the Holy Roman Empire, but there's a rum. There's Brandenburg, Prussia, Austria. The Ottomans are right here. In fact, Austria being weakened, they're going to try to besiege Vienna again. That's where croissants come from. And England. So, English Civil War. Everyone write down at the same time. There's an English Civil War. One thing about the English Civil War. This would be the other reason why there is no no or uh, no state religion in the United States. This is the federal government. It's because of the English Civil War. So, English Civil War. And we got to do one little bit of review. We'll just do this today. We'll finish it real quick. Remember the Magna Carta? That was passed way back in 1215. Some of you might know this, some of you not. But yeah, King John I was forced to sign this. When he was asking for taxes, um, he had the unfortunate situation of being uh, in power in England when his brother, Richard the Lionheart, went on the crusade, the third crusade. And the contrary to the king, the aristocracy. It limited the power of the king. And the big thing is, yeah, they established certain legal rights. Now, the legal rights really only apply to the nobility and the king. But once you set the stage that the king is not above the law, that is going to lead to reforms down the road. And there's going to be this real feeling of English liberty. And they'll talk about this over and over again. The king must ask about taxes, and there can be a jury trial. So many of the things that in the United States would become seen as almost that like part of common law would come to the Magna Carta. And I must add, I cannot emphasize this enough, this idea of English liberty. We have certain liberties. No one is above the law, necessarily. Taxes by consent of the governed. Jury trial. When the 13 colonies, and what is soon going to be the United, or what would be the United States, would rebel, the rebellion was not to break away England at, at, from, at first. It was to get our rights as Englishmen. So it goes to the Magna Carta. Yeah. Did you 
Hmm? It was complex because in England they had something called common law. And these are laws that are a legacy of just kind of common practice, but also from Roman law. And these are certain things like that. This is the law that we remember. And so what they're saying is the king's not above that law. Well, eventually that common law is going to be written down. And then in 1295, King Edward I, Longshanks, would establish the first real parliament. And the parliament would be certain lords, we're not quite to the House of Commons yet, and they would have, well, you have to write down the power of the purse. Now, that was established in the Magna Carta, but it wasn't, you know, they hadn't really ingrained it, it was had this vague idea that no one will come together. No. They're going to meet in a building in London, and they will decide on new taxes. And they set the idea that the monarch had to ask. And so here's a picture of Edward, and there's Edward essentially accepting that parliament, and here is the model parliament. That's parliament right there. The power of the purse, the model parliament. And so that's, that's the background. Certain English liberties, not above the law, power of the purse. Now remember, we had the, we've had, um, there's been the War of the Roses. There have been Civil War. There's been Henry VIII, Elizabeth. And now we have King James, and that leads to the English Civil War and Restoration, and tomorrow we finish that. So, you have time now to finish reading chapter 14, 1 and 2, there'll be a quiz tomorrow, and the map. I'll put the map in the third. I have a heart. I give, and I give. What do I get in return? And look, you already finished your chocolate milk. I didn't even get that. <laughs> Yeah. Huh? The Battle of White Mountain is right about there. Yeah. What do I do with all the maps? Are you really getting up with all the maps? Oh, I'll keep you all the maps. Just not one right now. You left them at home. I took them home. I have, a, I have a pretty good video on the English Civil War. I mean, it's really good. But I'm trying to decide between that. I really like it. But you got to the universe changed, too. It's not the sites of battles. No, it's not. No, I really wish they had done more the sites of battles. I think I told you they planned on doing more. I mean, you can see they set it up to do more. And then for whatever reason, it must not have got the ratings or... I wonder if they just couldn't find any games to really do on the subject. That very well could be. What do I do with the maps? You left them at home. Just give me one second. I know I have them. Put him here. Because we're doing this, I want to do English Civil War, because then I want to do the Aviator version. Right. We're getting to the scientific revolution. Is Jonestown just on the map? I think I have a copy on that. I can go find it otherwise. I have skills, but I'll, I'll get it. I'll borrow it from Steve. I think it might be still, I had a link of it, but, you know, it's taken out for you. Yeah. Okay. And I will put the map at the end of the period. Who's doing presentation on me? Oh, we do one more day work. One more day work, and then presentation seven months. Map done. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. That one? 
Denmark, Norway, yeah, it was a combined kingdom. Any, any questions, I'll be glad to ask. I'll be glad to ask them back to you. Crimea? Crimea? I'm asking the question. When the Russian, when the Soviets came they, and the Russians did the same thing, they settled Russians in various places, including this place called Crimea. And that's why there's such issues about Russian populations in this country called Ukraine today. But somebody might be using that as an excuse to invade. Hey, they're not invading. They're just, you know, yeah. they're keeping the peace in the uh, uh, newly free part of, of, of the Ukraine. They, they wanted their freedom, and Russia's just ensuring they get the peace they need. That's what's going to do. That's what. Right about here in Lucian. That's Norlington. yeah. Nordlington, that's one. That's oh. the big battle. The so pro this one. Norlington's right about here in Lucian. Right Luton, I really want to go there. That's when I go visit my sister in law going to Lucian. Um, what is the exact philosophy of the uh, let's say, uh, I mean, it obviously is not to be interpreted. We get an idea of it's not the body. Is that what you did? Just religious map? It's a good way of looking at that. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. You got the map? Oh, I didn't put this up. You're going to watch one of my favorite scenes, Galileo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically shut up or be burned as a heretic. So I thought he got threatened to his stomach taken out. Hmm? I thought he got threatened to take his stomach out. I don't know if I'm tortured. I mean, he might have been disemboweled, but he was. Well, I saw what's burnt to the stake. Also, though, he kind of uh, mocked the. Uh, was it the church? Yeah. What he wrote? He mocked him talking about uh, sticking with Ptolemy and the earth, everything revolving around the earth. Yeah. When he found moons around Jupiter. Sorry, brother. been acting up all day. Yeah, it's just taking me a long time. Good. 
Does that work? Okay. I'll put a religious map up. That's, that's Teddy Roosevelt.
Fine. Okay, if you got your maps set, I'll take them. Make sure your name is on them. Carry on. All right. Beautiful. Amazing. Not as colorful, but it's very impressive. So good. Amazing. Wonderful. Really good, except last prayer. Right? Can we say Lipsy? Crayon? Crayon? No crayon. Close. So tomorrow, I'm looking at 12 questions, and by the way, did I show you my crayons? Did I show you these? Wait, 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 wait. Sharpener, only the best. I don't like to brag, but look at that. Let me find my favorite color. Are you? Uh, actually, periwinkle's on the first color. Oh, this is Cordell Blue. Let me go through all the colors for you. Here's Inchworm. I, like, I didn't know about Galileo being disavowed. That, that doesn't surprise me, but I knew he was trying to be burnt at the stake. I'll have to look into that. Uh, but I just, I just read about Galileo. I just read about Galileo. Yeah. Uh, my mom calls my best friend Periwinkle. I didn't think that was an actual color. <laughs> it's color. Kind of a green or kind of a purpley yeah. Yep. Last day to work in the live air. Jeez. Huh? Oh no, Monday was your last day. Oh shoot. Yeah, so you guys missed it. Yes, we did. What, what, let me see. Call. Call. See, I saw that as a white. <laughs> what? <laughs> you look like you have sausages on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Why don't I have a jacket still fits? I should wear mine. I lost my letter. Really? Oh, are we going to the library? Library or no? Library. Last day in the library. Oh, you're back now. This is time to go to the library. Oh, do that work for. Last 